Bowel obstruction can be divided into either small or large bowel obstruction. However, before we get into that, let's talk about the immediate management of bowel obstruction. So first of all, the patient should be nil by mouth because if you were to give them anything to eat or drink, it's not going to go anywhere. If anything, it's just going to make them vomit. Secondly, they should be given some IV fluids because they are likely to have been vomiting a great deal leading up to this presentation. And thirdly, they should have a Riles tube inserted, and it's a specialised type of NG tube, to aspirate any of their stomach contents. And the investigations that are requested are usually initially an abdominal x-ray, and subsequently perhaps a CT scan to help figure out exactly where uh, the transition point of the obstruction is. So with small bowel obstruction, here we have an abdominal x-ray, and there are a few key features to look out for. So first of all, with small bowel obstruction, the dilated loops of bowel tend to be towards the center of the film. Secondly, um, a dilation of small bowel is considered to be anything that's greater than about three centimeters. So following the three, six, nine rule, which is three centimeters for small bowel, six centimeters for large bowel, and nine centimeters for the cecum. And the most characteristic feature is the presence of valvuli coniventes, which are folds in the mucosa that appear as these radio-opaque lines that go across from one bowel wall to the other. The most common cause of small bowel obstruction is adhesion, so it's important to find out whether the patient has previously had any operations on their abdomen. Hernias, so incarcerated hernias, can cause small bowel obstruction, and malignancy can also sometimes cause, cause small bowel obstruction, but that's less common. And one important point I'd like to make is that you can get non-GI causes of bowel obstruction. So, for example, if you have a malignancy in the pelvis, such as an ovarian malignancy or perhaps a very big lymph node, that in itself can cause an extrinsic mechanical uh, obstruction of the GI tract. Small bowel obstruction may be managed with surgery. However, given that adhesions are often the cause of small bowel obstruction, it seems a little bit counterintuitive to go into the abdomen to try and relieve the obstruction given that another operation is going to increase the risk of further adhesions forming. So it is sometimes considered, especially if it's thought that uh, some of the bowel wall is becoming necrotic. However, gastrographin may be a better option in many cases. So gastrographin is an oral contrast medium. However, it's also quite useful because it acts a bit like an osmotic laxative in that it helps draw fluid into um, the lumen and hence reduces bowel wall edema and can actually help relieve a small bowel obstruction. With large bowel obstruction, the main features you're looking for are that the loops of bowel tend to be towards the outside of the film. And in large bowel obstruction, you do not get valvuli coniventes. Instead, you get these small pouches which are called haustra. And the common causes of large bowel obstruction are tumour and volvulus. It may be managed surgically or in the case of a sigmoid volvulus it can be managed using a flatus tube. 